what just happened in America? Why did the US go so thoroughly red at almost every uh, governmental level? And what does the future bode? I'm, of course, joined by Stelios, Josh, Bo, and Dan. And Harry is Zoom calling in to join us. And uh, Afternoon, everyone. I guess the, the, the question is, so why did this happen? Stelios, what's your opinion? I mean, why wouldn't it happen? Uh, the Democrats the question had... Question with a question. No, the Democrats had literally one of the worst campaigns ever. Bad candidates. I mean, atrocious can, atrocious picks. Bad candidates, incoherent message, and uh, completely out of touch. And ba also bad delivery. When, you, when you're talking from teleprompters, when you're reading from teleprompters, that, that doesn't exactly inspire confidence in your abilities. Point to that would be but Biden ran his campaign from his basement <laughs> during covid it it was a different era they could hide it better they had an excuse for it hmm. Josh what do you think i think it just came down to the fact that four years of the democrats made people worse off and they were just like well we don't like the direction the country is going we saw lots of um polling ironically enough suggesting that and I think particularly the economy, people would just notice that the, the cost of, of gas, of groceries and things like that would go up. And although when you listened to a Trump rally, Trump's sort of core base would cheer the most at him saying, we're going to take, you know, critical race theory and transgenderism out of schools. We're not going to let them transition minors. That would be the stuff that they cheered for which in my opinion is a uh, distraction from the financial extortion that goes on. Um, but I think for um, a lot of the people that decided the election in the first place, it was probably economic. How about you? Mm, yeah, uh, I think maybe Dr. Turley said it on the night of the election. I think he said, um, there's just only so far you can take the insanity before it, it hits reality. There's only so many liars people are prepared <coughs> to swallow. Um, they just pushed it too far. They did as much as they could really have done in 2020, and they would have needed a genuinely inspiring candidate to beat Trump in 24, which they just did not have, which is what Stelios was saying. Just, it's just a terrible pick. So I think, I think those are the main reasons. Oh, and as Josh said, the main thing is you're buying power. People are just poorer in real terms. They nearly always throw out a, a government or a president when you've become poorer, noticeably poorer within four years. Anything to add? Yeah, I would. Um, I mean, the underlying reason, of course, is that the Democrats become completely insane and place themselves on the wrong side of all right-thinking people. Um, I mean, what, what they were trying to push with, you know, the gender stuff and with children and all the rest of it was simply unacceptable. But you follow up quite correctly with, OK, well, why didn't that work in 2020? You know, what, what's the difference there? And the way that I see it is that they exchanged hard power, no, they exchanged soft power for hard power. So the left has built up this soft power. And by what I basically mean by that is influence. Um, influence in the media, influence throughout the government departments. It was, it was basically they controlled all of those mechanisms of influence. And they were so tilted by Trump's previous win in 2016 that they took all of this soft power, all of the credibility and all of the influence, and they burnt it to the ground to win one election because they were so traumatised by Trump's 2016. But of course, once you've burnt it to the ground, people aren't then going to listen to the media because they've been exposed. All of those claims, and, it, and it's difficult to remember now just the sheer extent of the things that they were saying, but all of the claims that they were making, the intelligence officials, I mean, it was root and branch, and, and I, won't be, I won't even be able to do it justice now. But they burnt it all to the ground to win that one election. That's not repeatable because people see through it. And actually, I do have a question on the back of that, which is what did they get for burning it all down? Four years. Well, they got four years, but, but what tangible results? They, did they got I mean, they, that one black woman on the Supreme Court. Yeah, and they, and they managed... That's what they got, really. Yeah, they, they managed to get a war. They, they flooded certain swing districts with illegal immigrants for all the good that did them. Well, and if... If Trump was like his first term and he didn't go hard on his promises um, in this one, then, yeah, maybe it's worth it. And those guys will be naturalized. They have children and it will swing the swing the states. But if Trump actually follows through and he's been radicalized now by having the last election, whatever happened with that, um, you've got to say that that was a really bad trade they made. What are your thoughts, Harry? 
So I can't really add that much to this that hasn't already been said. I completely agree with Stelios. This was the worst campaign ever with the worst candidates ever. Josh is absolutely right that they uh, made everything worse through the uh, preceding four years. Their actions have made everybody in America poorer. And also on the geopolitical scale as well, America looks so much worse than it did under Donald Trump as well. That if you're in the intelligence agencies or in the State Department of the U.S., you must recognize that Kamal, uh, Do, uh, Joe Biden in the first place was not somebody you really wanted representing you, senile Joe Biden, on the world stage. Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, possibly even less. I'm going to say as well that I, I think uh, something that's not yet been mentioned is the demographic issue here, which is that, uh, put frankly, good old-fashioned subconscious <clears throat> racism might have had a role to play in that most people in America, even black men, do not want to be ruled over by a nagging harpy of questionable African descent, Indian, African. I still don't know if we came to a definitive conclusion on that. She looked terrible. In every interview, she came across like a nagging HR lady. And even if she had the strongest policies ever that would have put America onto the fast track to success, which she didn't, I think that would have been a mountain to overcome in the first place i think on dan's question oh, of, oh yeah i was just gonna no, say no, no, um to, to build upon your point one thing that i said and, and lots of people quite liked was that she reminded me as in kamala harris of skylar white from breaking bad which of course is one of the most popular tv shows of all time and if you have one of the most unpopular characters of all time. Uh, exactly and 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 if that comparison can stick and people say oh yeah that's that's bang on yeah. then you've really done something wrong haven't you because she's sort of the annoying, nagging wife of America, in a way. But, but, but sorry, Harry. What's your thought there, Harry? <clears throat> oh, absolutely. Uh, in terms of Dan's question of what have they got, in a, term, in, a, in a sort of meta perspective, if we're going to look at the culture and more, more specifically the demographics of America, because f for me and many others, the demographic change of the West, America being included in that, is the most pressing issue of our time. I, I think that on a broader scale, the regime, if it is intact by the end of Donald Trump's new administration, has bought itself a little bit of time with the whole concept of the putting the woke away. Under Biden, under Kamala Harris, things accelerated to such an insane point, things became so crazy and so unlikable that people will accept just a few steps back from that. And if Donald Trump... Chris Rufo, Elon Musk can pull it back a few steps from that, not even back to 1990s liberalism, back to 2010 liberalism with gay marriage and we're okay with transsexuals as long as, you know, they're not putting it in the schools and pushing it on the children. People will accept that and that puts people in a place of complacency, a place of comfort to the point where they can still do all of the really terrible things in the background now without there being as much of a media eye on it. Yeah, no, I, th I think um, I think basically everyone's making points that are all cumulative. These are all correct points, and I think <clears throat> I think you're right to highlight the madness at the top of it. Because I mean, you know, Doctor Rachel Levine being like the admirable admiral, oh, so the weird yeah. mouth of Sauron trans admiral, and then remember the bald Great, nuclear energy guy who oh, stole women's yeah who stole women's clothing. It was, yeah. Chucked out of the administration. Yeah, keeps stealing suitcases. Yeah, that, literally that, wearing yeah. a woman's because this one one African woman had made a particular dress herself, so it was the only one, and he wore it on TV. And it's like, oh, so you stole that? And so it like this this genuine sort of clown car of an administration where it's just like th these are all freaks, and they're all weird. And then I think Harry, uh, you're you're on the money. In America, it's illegal immigration that they're particularly bothered about. Uh, for some reason, the Americans aren't particularly bothered about legal immigration, which is okay, fair enough. Um, and Kamala Harris, of course, just allowed millions upon there's something like ten million illegals to flood into the United States. Under that, her, that we know of. That we know of, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think that, that the, these are all. I mean, uh, Josh is of course completely correct as well. There's going to be a huge slice of the population that are just like, why do my groceries cost so much? Why does my fuel cost so much? Um, but when you combine all these things together, and then you look at like Harris's campaign, and it, it in retrospect, without the sort of the media fanfare surrounding it if you take it outside of that you realize it looks like a real hail mary campaign what we're running on joy good vibes tim waltz being a white guy who likes tacos like what are we talking about here you know th Brad this summer is, 
yeah, brat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. She's brat. It's like, sorry, what the, what the fuck are you doing? There is nothing here other than four more years of decline or Trump saying, well, you know, you remember how good it was under me. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do bam, bam. And we're going to go through a bunch of things that Trump has been saying for ages now that are just genuinely good ideas. It's not surprising that Trump got a landslide. Well, you say that and you're right. But how is that different to any other Democrat campaign that, are, that we can remember? Well, I mean, the Obama campaign was different. Mm, it ran on Was hope. it? Oh, well, people believed the hope line. Yeah, yeah. They, they there did. was... They, yes. there was a, well, the, yeah, the, the difference is, is it, it was believed before. Mm. But uh, Yeah, but there was a cultural inflection in Obama um, because he was essentially a racial redeemer, right? He was going to redeem America from being racist. That was a genuine... And this is a genuine canard that the Americans have in their mind because of the history of America, right? And so Obama had the right look, he had the right rhetoric, he had the right sort of speech patterns. You know, he was he was the guy who was going to solve this problem. But, it, but it's all stylistic. Sure, but it, it was all idealistic, I think maybe is the best way to put it. But it, it, it came at a time where America hadn't gone through a significant downturn, right? The American economy wasn't cratering. Uh, we hadn't just been locked up in our homes. Uh, things weren't all terrible everywhere in fact everything was pretty good and so it's kind of a, a vanity a luxury belief that yeah and if we just get obama then we've arrived at the end point of history basically look i think let, let's also be honest here uh, that obama was slightly presented as and presented himself at the time as a white guy in blackface well, he came straight after, that way, but yeah. he came straight after Bush as well. When Bush <laughs> yeah. is 9/11, Iraq, Afghanistan, and like, 2008, we're going to put that. Uh, we're going to put that um, episode behind us. Yeah. Even though, of course, Obama didn't stop those wars. But anyway, he's the great, the audacity of hope and stuff. Sorry, Stelios, go ahead. No, I, w I wanted to say something else because it seems to me that um, the uh, there are some things I disagree with about the uh, with your assessment. So. What they won is that they managed to get 70 million votes with the worst campaign ever. If a Republican had one of the worst campaigns ever, they wouldn't be. They they wouldn't have. Well, like Mitt Romney. Yeah, they, they 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 would have fared much worse. So it seems to me that they shouldn't be underestimated. Yeah, that's the, what I want to say. Is that having someone who literally is an incredibly fake candidate who cannot even speak without a teleprompter and st saying, which is inevitable because it's your election and in election, every time there is an election, everyone says that something really important hangs on this vote and saying that there is a national emergency that we need to, to tackle and your suggestions to solve the net the national emergencies tampons in boys bathrooms and getting 70 million votes that's terrifying well now the republicans do control the will control the senate and the house of representatives but it seems to me that this isn't to be taken lightly this is absolutely horrifying yeah. I mean, imagine if they had a, a, a slightly better campaign as Joe Biden put it, they uh, built the most inclusive voter fraud organization mm. in the United States. <laughs> so you are correct. I, and uh, fact, can I, I, mean, can I can respond to Stelios? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, I, I agree. It's terrifying, the 70 million votes for a completely vacuous campaign. It's probably also a lot to do with the um, hatred for Donald Trump still having some steam left in it. I do think, especially after conversations that I've had over the past week, that we're past peak Trump derangement syndrome, but there's still a lot of uh, of uh, power in Trump derangement syndrome to get people to the polls. Uh, but with with that, on, on the Trump derangement syndrome thing, it's quite interesting. Over the weekend, I went to Birmingham to a punk rock gig and uh, also got recognized by one of our fans there. So shout out to that guy if you're watching this. Nice to see you. Um, Obviously, it was a punk gig, so it's mostly leftists in the crowd, and the bands felt the need to have to scream about Trump, F Donald Trump, F this, F that. But the thing is, it felt so artificial. It felt like it had no sincerity to it in the way that it would have even two years ago. It felt like they were just going through the motions of, uh, I'm a black woman singing punk rock music, so... Uh, I've got to shout about Donald Trump just so that we they did it both both bands I saw got it out of the way right at the beginning of the set as well so they were kind of like okay let's get this out of the way and then we can enjoy ourselves whereas before the entire gig would have been laden with those sorts of things
If you would like to see the full version of this premium video, please head over to lotuseaters.com and subscribe to gain full access to all of our premium content.